Hey there, the good Dr. G at FCMW in Hollywood, Florida. Today, we're going to take a chance to uh, look over the great news that came in on Wednesday, November 8th, from the FDA for Manjaro and its new indication or new, let's call it brother, ZepBound, which is basically terzepatide, but approved, FDA approved now for weight loss just like Ozempic and Wegovi have that situation with semaglutide um, where Wegovi is for weight loss and Ozempic is for diabetes. Oddly enough, uh, both of the weight loss medications are basically more effective for weight loss at just a bit higher um, dosages, which is interesting. Um, we're going to take a look at the press release that you know we have up here now. Uh, we're going to take a look at the, a bit of the science, not to get too you know technical as to how um, the FDA actually got to the point where they finally um, approved the medication. Then we're going to take a look at some of the um, some of the inserts, the package inserts, and take a deep dive into you know the dosaging and how this is going to be dosed out if you were to get on it for weight loss. Now, as you may know, for the last couple of years. Um, especially over the pandemic, for some reason, Manjaro and, and uh, Ozempic were beginning to be used more and more for the weight loss indication that they both now have. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. No one knows. I guess people were, you know, putting on the, uh, the COVID-10 or COVID-15, whatever you want to call it, and were looking for ways to get their weight back down. So that possibly is the reason why we're here. We are where we are with this, with this medication. The other, the other thing is that the the two companies that that make the uh, the, the medications, um, they were doing trials over that time anyway. And for instance, this one, Manjaro came out with their findings on the on their trial at the end of uh, 2022, or well, sometime in 2022. And that's been, you know, FDA has been going over and over it for the last, you know, year and a half to finally get to where we are right now and approval after the phase three trial was done with, uh, with the Manjaro or ZepBound uh, medication that's, that's now going to be marketed out there as ZepBound. So, which is Trizepatide. Again, Manjaro, Trizepatide, and ZepBound. Same medication, different doses. Manjaro for diabetes and ZepBound is going to be for, well, it is for weight loss now. So let's look at this press release. Um, it says that ZepBound is uh, FDA approves Lily's uh, ZepBound to Zepatide for chronic weight management, meaning, you know, just using the word chronic means for a long term. Um, it looks like they're, they're, they're looking for this thing to be um, a long term deal for many patients for obesity. That's interesting, given the fact that, you know, um, I personally and other doctors around me, I think, are thinking this is going to be a short term deal. And we are mostly focusing. Well, I am. I'm definitely focusing on getting patients to a point where they change their lifestyle. Um, and if that's the real issue of their obesity, there are patients who, you know, they've changed their lifestyle. They're working hard and just simply can't get down to a, a, a safe uh, weight for them or satisfied with the weight loss that they've, they've gotten so far. So maybe those patients will be indicated for a longer, a longer period of time. The study that was done and published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which we're going to go over in a second, the actual, the timeline that they were, they had the patients on was 72 weeks. So clearly 52 weeks in a year, you're looking over, you know, 20 more weeks. And the FDA clearly made it, uh, saw that it was safe and effective um, over that timeline, or else I would assume that the FDA wouldn't have approved it. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, the fact that, you know, you can have a patient on this type of medication for that long um, and not see much of uh, severe adverse um, any severe adverse reactions or effects of the medication is very, very promising. Um, there is one black box warning that's been added to Manjaro um, in April of 2023. Um, we'll go over that as well. It was always a concern um, 
And now it's a clear contraindication that you'll find on the packaging if you, when you open up the packaging and take a look, or you look at the studies that are being done and the, the inserts that are being posted to the Lilly website. So let's jump into the press release. You see the FDA approved it. Uh, it's, a, it's a powerful new option for the treatment of obesity or overweight with weight related medical problems. Again, the medical problems, the one medical problem that's going to be excluded, or well, was excluded from the study was diabetes itself, which is very interesting. Again, uh, as before, the, the, the one indication that they would like to see and there, and you know, uh, they were looking to, for patients to have is that the, any weight related problems, if they were over the, the, the a BMI of 27, and that, and that included pre-diabetes and diabetes, and now it looks like it excludes it. Uh, and now, and the other one was, you know, BMI greater than 30%. So 27% with medical, with weight related problems, or, you know, 30, 30 at BMI of 30 or greater and, and, um, and, and no medical problems besides diabetes. Diabetes itself is a, is a, is a chronic condition that the, the most prevalent chronic condition in the, in, in the world, um, yeah, and, and it has significant mor morbidity and, mor and mortality associated with it. So we have to take uh, chronic obesity with uh, with a lot of seriousness. So, so this is the press release. I'm not going to bore you. You know, you can you can look at the press release. They're all you know, they're they the press releases are not by put out by companies. They're not put out to, to put out bad news for the most part. And then this one is for this company, great news. I'm going to focus at the top where here it says. Adults taking ZepBound in clinical in clinical trial that they did that that Lilly conducted um, lost an average 48 pounds at the highest dose. Interesting. The doses for the Monjaro Monjaro and for diabetes is 2.5, 5 milligrams and 10. And the dosage is for this medication in the Surmount One trial, which is the trial that that you know pushed the ZepBound to get. FDA approval was uh, 5, 10, and 15 milligrams. So they added 2.5 to everything, which is 5 milligrams. So they found that the, 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 the average weight loss was um, 48 pounds on the highest dose. That's um, a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. 25, 23 kilos. Uh, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> I, 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 that's impressive. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't say anything about that. So um, you know, there, there's more to this this uh, press this press release. It talks about um, what a GLP one is and the special thing, which I think makes Manjaro, which I know makes Manjaro different and more and, and possibly more effective than the other ones, the other medications in the GLP one class, is the fact that it activates both the GIP glucose uh, intestine, intestinal um, insulin. No, sorry glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. I can always get tongue-tied on that one. And then glucose-like uh, peptide 1. So both hormones are activated by this, by this uh, medication, which I think is why this medication is such, um, such a game-changer. Uh, there's a thing called, you know, where, where two medications, I think it's not a called, but it, it's, it's an effect of two hormones working together. Uh, like the Wonder Twins, <laughs> I'm dating myself, but they, they unite and they and they they make a, a a great team together. So I think that's one of the things where this medication is much much different than the rest of the medications in the class. Uh, and I also think that in the long run, or in, even you know in the short term, this medication may end up having less side effects on many patients because of that. Because of the fact that you know it, it's only touching to a certain degree each one of the hormones, not just pushing the one hormone all by itself and to its you know to the max. So it's giving you know 25, 30 percent, 50 percent effort on both of them, and then they get together and make a big a big difference. And you know I I believe that's how that, how this medication is making such a big difference. So um, the press release is really you know it's gonna it's gonna highlight everything great about the trial, the surmount one trial. Uh, surmount two and surmount surmount two and three surmount one are also going um, are also inclusive in in the in this study of two thousand five hundred thirty nine adults. So um, 
good stuff, good information. Uh, but again, this is a press release, so you might want to take a deeper dive into where all of this stuff comes from. And if that's the case, then this is where you need to be. The New England Journal of Medicine in July of 21 of uh, July 21, 21 of 2022 um, posted or well uh, published the results of tazerpatide once weekly for the, the treatment of obesity. So that means for the, you know, for years prior to that, before they published this, um, the study was going on. So, you know, this has been in the works. This is not something that was, you know, pushed after people started to use it before it was FDA approved. This is something that was known to be an effect or a, a benefit of the medication and people were going after it for that reason. So. That's one of my issues with, you know, people saying or, or you know, pushing that, hey, you know, this medication for strictly for diabetes. Why are people using it for weight loss? The companies that develop the medication themselves noticed they 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 noted the indication for the possibility for the indication for weight loss many years ago, at least five or six years ago, for sure. So that's why they started the studies. Um, which take years to get going anyway. So you're, you're, you know, this is this was years in the making. This is not something that just came about because a couple people decided to use this these medications off label. And and obesity again is a chronic disease. It says it right here at the top of the background um, with substantial global and morbidity and mortality. Um, and so th these medications are 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 making a difference in. In a, in a disease process that we've been fighting for forever, and we've had trash results with other medications. Varied to be, you know, for sure, but nothing consistent, nothing that you can put your eyes to or your, your, your point your finger at and say, hey, this is the one that we need to be using. That's why there's so much stuff on the shelves in, in, in the um, pharmacies and, and everywhere else, and people are all, all over the internet looking for answers to help them lose weight because the medications that we have as, as physicians just aren't working, <laughs> just don't work. Not for the long term, for sure. Um, and even in most patients, not in the short term either. So uh, this study was conducted over 72 weeks. It was a phase three double blind randomized controlled trial, which is the gold standard. Uh, and they assigned 2,539 adults with a body mass index of greater than 30 or 27 or more and at least one weight related complication. And again, they did exclude diabetes as the weight related complication or prediabetes as well, I believe. Um, so yeah, so if you take a look at the, at, at the, at the, res, at the results, um, a baseline uh, mean body weight was 140, 104 kilograms. So these were, you know, obese folks. Um, and the, the mean BMI was 38, and 94.5 percent of them had a BMI of grade of graded in 30. And the the grade the mean percentage change in in weight at week 72 was 15 percent was the middle of the group at the five milligram dose. It was 19.5 percent change. This is negative negative 19.5 percent change in weight at um, 72 weeks at the 10 milligram dose and then a negative 20.9 percent at the 15 milligram dose and then the placebo lost negative 3.1 percent uh, with placebo at, at week 72. so clearly without doing any math <laughs> but it says that the confidence intervals are there clearly um, the 10 and well all of them i'd say the 5 10 and 15 milligram doses uh, did a great job of losing weight at 72 weeks. So yeah, the proof is in the pudding here. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt about it that you're getting a, you know, a great, you know, benefit of weight loss from, from the medication. This again, 72 weeks is a very long time to be on the, to be on a medication like this for this indication. But if it's necessary, it looks like it's safe and effective to be on it for that long.
that's one of the you know questions I get from my patients a lot who are on these this class of medications, the GLP ones. How long? How long am I going to have to be on this, doc? And I and I typically tell them, you know, for 17 weeks, um, 20 weeks, that I like to have them on at max. Get them to a place where they're cruising at a weight that they feel, you know, I like to say athletic, uh, to feel sexy, to feel, you know, confident, to feel good about themselves. I'm hoping that that number brings them down to 27% or less. Um, I've seen less comorbidity and mortality across the board with patients with, with 27% body mass or less, or less in my practice. There are papers that support that, that number as well. So I'm not trying to get every single person down to 22% or, you know, a, a BMI of 22 and, you know, it, which is many times unrealistic. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I I do tell my patients, I have been telling them, you know, uh, to get down to about, to get down about, you know, 27% um, over four to five months. And then we would, you know, we, we reevaluate and see where we are. Um, but this, again, this, this has been out. This has been, you know, mulled over and, and looked over by people who are a lot smarter than me. And, uh, and, and it looks like 72 weeks or more is okay. It's not a problem. So in conclusion, we're not going to go through the whole study clearly. I mean, it's, it's, it's posted. You can read it, um, everything, uh, the, how it's done and, and how it was done and, and, and what was, uh, what was the conclusion. But here in the conclusion clearly states, quote, in this 72 week trial in participants with obesity of, uh, with obesity, five milligrams, 10 milligrams or 15 milligrams of tazipatide once weekly provided substantial and sustained reductions in body weight. So this is, uh, you know, some more abstract, you know, more information about obesity at first. This is typically how these uh, studies are written. If you've never opened up a New England Journal of Medicine, and if you're not in medicine, I don't see why you would have. <laughs> but it's, it's not very, you know, exciting reading for, for you if you're not in, in medicine. But it's, it's interesting to um, folks like me and, and, you know, people who are, who are in the field, how, uh, how did we come about how this, these things come about and how these studies are run. So um, this is not a bad idea to take a look at it, especially if you're getting into, you know, if you're thinking about getting on one of the, the GLP-1 agonists or, you know, or the, you know, our GIP, GLP-1 superstar um, medication of the group or different, the different guy, uh, Manjaro slash Zepbound, not a bad read for you. So here, is the you know the, basically what you would usually you would typically typically see when you open up when you get a brand new box of medications is this paper that's folded up real real small you open it up and it looks like you know a poster almost but and it has a bunch of things on it and, and this is what usually predicates patients coming in and asking you questions about the myriad of you know um, side effects that it says on there. Uh, which are very typically very very uncommon that come about, but you know they have to put all these things into the package insert so that way you know you know of all the possible side effects. But I will highlight one thing. You know here uh, the Zep Zepbound. Let's talk about Zepbound in particular. It says here, do not use Zep Zepbound if you or if you or any of your family have ever had have ever had a type of thyroid cancer called medullary thyroid carcinoma, or MTC. Very, um, it's a rare uh, type of thyroid car, uh, uh, cancer. It does have a familial component. It has, uh, there are different syndromes that can run through families. And that's the second one. Do not use that found if you have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type two, um, or also called MEN2. And obviously, it, it, it always, it, basically every medication says, do not use Zepbound if you have a serious, have had a serious allergic reaction to terzepatide or any of the ingredients in, in, in Zepbound. That goes without saying. Um, I don't know how you're going to know that before you put the Zepbound in your, you know, in your body, but I guess it's one of those legal things that they have to say. It says it on every single medication um, insert, package inserts that you'll read. So. Yeah. Um, now the the side effects are the same. 
the same as it's always been with Manjaro and 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 Ozempic and 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 now Wegovi and um every every one of them in the class. Uh Trulicity is another one. Um severe stomach problems, kidney problems or kidney failure. We don't know exactly how, you know, how it's going to affect the kidney function, but we do know that these medications are diuretics, which diuretics means it causes you to, you know, lose um um fluids basically urinate more than more than, more than you, us, you usually would um it's it can cause gallbladder problems in the gi tract inflammation of the pancreas or pancreatitis uh serious allergic reactions clearly it's a medication that was first introduced for diabetes and can cause hypoglycemia um so yeah uh, look out for hypoglycemia and i and i teach my patients who are not diabetics to make sure that they, you know, they're not going to want to eat as much, especially like the carbs that we we try to stay away from. Well, actually, I don't tell them to stay away from it, but I tell them because of the way that you lose weight on these medications, which is another thing we should talk about, or we are going to talk about, that you should definitely prioritize protein um, before carbs. Uh, you're going to lose fat and 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 muscle tone and protein, and you know, which is your protein, which is you know muscle muscle mass. At a, at pretty fast. When that weight you're losing is, you know, it's going to be fluids. Some of it's going to be fluids. Then you're going to lose fat as well. And then you're going to lose, you know, muscle mass. So I teach and preach um, keeping up your protein content because we want to hold on to as much of that muscle mass as possible. And by week three or by week three or four, you should be transitioning from, you know, getting into working out if you're not working out and getting on the, getting off the couch. You should be transitioning into weight training or you know at least some sort of resistance training even body weight re resistance training to keep those muscles strong and growing instead of you know getting smaller and smaller um atrophying or just losing my uh, muscle tone over overall so that's the the other thing that i you know i teach and preach on patients who, ha who are on these medications for weight loss even more so for manjaro um, because of the fact that Manjaro with GIP, GIP specifically and exclusively from GLP-1 attacks the adipose tissue itself, not just losing weight and, you know, and, and burning it or, you know, from a caloric deficit, but it actually causes, um, um, lipolysis. It causes it, the, the adipose tissue to get break down. It goes and breaks down, um, the adipose tissue. So, yeah. You're you're going to get you know you're going to get significant losses if you are breaking that specifically breaking it down. You're not eating as much, and it's looking for you know your body's looking for energy to burn, and you're going to start eating up muscle. So, got to stay on top of on stay on top of this stuff and make sure that you keep your blood sugar up, which is one of the reasons I have found that many patients end up with lethargy or you know feeling really sluggish or you know symptoms like like of these low blood sugar people who 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 are not diabetic do not know what this is because they've you know they've never had this before dizziness or lightheadedness sweating confusion or drowsiness headache blurred vision slurred speech shakiness fast heart rate uh feeling anxious very irritable mood changes hunger weakness or feeling feeling jittery very can be non specific but if you're on these medications you should definitely take a look at what your blood sugar is um when you're on there because you may not be eating enough to keep your blood sugar up i know it's a catch-22 but i always push for fruit snacks everybody's on fruit at least two servings uh, a day who are on these medications with me um then it talks about t patients with type 2 diabetes uh being uh, with vision pink changes but i mean you know it's weird because they just said that these patients shouldn't be on it but i think because of the crossover of this medication from from um, Manjaro, they they indicated they put this this uh, indication in there. Now it's very interesting. This depression or thoughts of suicide um, it has to be somebody or some you know at least you know at least one person in the trial. If you look dig deep into the into the uh, the charts there, one of the the reported severe adverse effects must have been or adverse effects must have been um, something related to depression. Um, I've not seen it uh, in in clinical practice with you know with 
um, semaglutide or terzepatide. I've not seen it, but something must have happened for it to uh, come up. Then you have your most commons, and these do happen. You know, your, your GI tract issues, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, constipation, um, abdominal pain, indigestion. The in injection site reactions are rare. Feeling tired goes all along, I believe, with the, with the, with the blood sugar drops. Um, allergic reaction, hair loss, interesting. Um, belching, you know, you slow down the, in, the, 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 the GI tract, you're going to get, you know, some, 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 some uh, excessive um, gases and air building up and coming back up the, the, the chute per se, per se. But um, yeah, the, these, are, these are very, very common. Uh, we treat them as we go along. Um, if they're, if, aside from the diarrhea and vomiting and constipation, mostly the diarrhea and vomiting, everything else we can, we can work with. Um, diarrhea and vomiting for me, very, very rarely has happened. If it does happen, if it's a one-off or, you know, every once a week or twice a week type thing, the vomiting, um, the diarrhea I'm speaking about, the vomiting I have not had, but the diarrhea, if that happens, we, we deal with it as it goes. Like, you know, we, we, we let it go. But if the patient continues to have diarrhea and vomiting, I have, what I've done is just basically drop the dose down. Um, and see and, and see if that's it's a tolerating dose thing or if it's an ongoing issue for the patient. And if they need to switch to another medication, we will, uh, even if it continues. Or um, if they usually, what happens is we drop down to the the, the previous uh, previously most effective dose without adverse effects, and they do fine. Um, the weight loss may not, may not be as rapid as they like, but steady as you go. So we, we still are losing weight, not maybe not the three or four pounds a week type thing, but maybe down to two or three pounds a week, which is more than enough, more than safe, you know? So I, th that's what, that's how I take care of it. But you know, this is not, this is not medical advice for you. This is for, in for education purposes. I'm just talking in general. Um, but anyway, uh, that, this is the package insert. I did pick out a couple things I want you to see. Um, here, take a look at this. Here we have what it looks like, uh, what it's going to look like. Right. This is uneven, it, it's so brand new. The picture is so, so brand new. It doesn't even have the labeling on there. It just shows you a typical pen, um, an auto injector. So if you've never seen one of these, uh, this is an auto injector. It's currently in the lock state. If you look here, the, the, uh, it's locked. So if you get one of these, your doc puts you on one of these doses, probably for, for according to the trial, doc may start you at five milligrams. A week and when you get the pen you'll get four of these in a box and it's locked this gray cap here protects the needle here we have inside of here is where the fluid the the actual solution of the medication is in suspension and what you do is you you know pick out a site grab a chunk of the belly just grab a chunk and unlock it you turn this green to the this green tab over to the green. Take off the gray protector cap. Put this hub directly to your skin, to your flat there, and, and the, it, don't worry. It's it, then it's not going to go all the way in <laughs> into your body. It's just going to go. It's it's rated to go. It's 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 calibrated to go just into the subcutaneous space, which is just under the skin. Then you. With your thumb or finger, typically thumb is the most common and most comfortable, I believe, way to, to, to depress this purple bluish cap here or a button. And then it goes off by itself. It just fires all this fluid into the subcutaneous space and you get your medication. Then it retracts. Don't worry. You're not going to stick yourself. The needle retracts all the way back in here. Then you just throw the whole thing away. The whole thing away. Don't recap it. It's not going to stick anyway. Just throw the whole thing away. All right. And that's about it. You do that once a week. You can do it on the same day. It doesn't have to be the same hour. Do that on the same day. And 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 then you'll, you know, off you go. Start your workouts. Get you about 100 and, 150 minutes of cardiovascular exercise a day. That could be walking. I, I encourage walking to most of my patients right away. If they're a little, you know, if they have issues with walking because of, you know, pain in their knees because of their weight, typically, uh, I then usually ask them to get into 
uh, cycling or into maybe into spinning or even better, the best exercise I can think of that takes the load off of your knees to decrease the wear and tear and the pain that comes along with, um, you know, pounding pavement or, you know, pounding the track or doing things like that. The best exercise is probably swimming or any exercise, even those extra stretching and calisthenics in the pool is a great way to start to get active when you were um, overweight and suffering from um, issues with your knees, your ankles, maybe your hips um, and for the short term until you can get some of that weight off of those joints and get back to doing some more, you know, some more vigorous activity. Not that, you know, swimming can't be, it's not a vigorous activity itself. It can be very vigorous, but not everyone likes to swim or can swim for that matter. So um, if you can get in the pool and be standing and have the water hold up your weight, it's a good way to get moving first as this, uh, as the weight at the, the beginning part of the weight loss happens to, until you can get the weight off of your legs and off of your hips and, and your knees and ankles um, and get going. So it's a, it's, 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 uh, it's a great thing for people to get started. So I, I, I usually um, recommend any one of those things, but as long as they're moving, as long as patients are moving for 150 minutes a, a day, I'm sorry, 150 minutes a week, 150 minutes a day is not bad, but 150 minutes a week or more, um, you will typically see weight loss of about three to four, maybe even five pounds a week, which is great. Um, keep that up for about the first month or so. And then we get you into, you know, adding into on top of that, adding into at least three to four times a week maybe some strength training, some resist, resistance training. It can be body weight. It can be added weight um, to make sure that we keep up the, the, the muscle mass that I talked about earlier. So that's very, very important. Um, so yeah, so this is what it looks like. This is what the, uh, the actual, uh, the, 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 the auto injector is going to look like when they market it. I'm sure it's going to have a bunch of nice, pretty colors on here with the uh, labeling and the, uh, obviously the manufacturer's name. In these dosages, five, and then they tested the ten, and then they tested the five milligrams, um, the fifteen milligram dose, which is you know a new dose actually, because up until uh, for for Manjaro, the, the the upper the upper limit was ten, um, or it remains to be it, it remains to be ten. So um, interesting how the weight loss it, they can push it further, or they've pushed it further with weight loss for both medications for both. Wegovi and now Zepbound, they are presented in higher doses, typically higher doses than than the doses that are presented for their you know cousin or brother, if you want to call it, um, respectively, um, Ozempic and Monjaro. So interesting, but you know that's how it was tested. So now this last one that I'm going to go over with you is the medication guide. Another insert that's typically in the um, either in the insert for the the, the actual medication itself. Or actually, the, the, this is what you know doctors would see um, when um, when they come across you know come across the medication. So um, uh, the medication guide here says tells you even tells you how to pronounce it. it said Zep bound um, to Zepatide injection for subcutaneous use only. Again, it, it, there's going to be a lot of repetition on top of what the the large poster the folder the folded piece of paper that opens up to like almost a poster, um, says, uh, and, and it's just saying it again, uh, with some more, you know, just to just reiterate the, the, the possibility for thyroid tumors, including cancer. Um, and then it goes into what is that bound is actually, uh, it tells you that it's injectable. It is a, it is prescribed prescription based, uh, prescription based medication, um, um, that, that, you know, it helps to lose weight, obesity with excess weight or overweight, uh, who, who may also have medical problems and, and issues with losing weight and keeping it off. Um, and that's what ZepBound does. Um, should, uh, it also said it should, it should be used with a reduced calorie, caloric diet and increased physical activity, which is what I said. Um, there are many different videos out there you can watch about the nutrition that is recommended with these medications. I typically, I typically just um, ask the patients to continue to eat the same things they're eating at first, but eat a, like half of it. Um, and then we start to change that diet into more of a nutrition type thing. I'm not looking for 
I'm not looking for a diet. I'm looking for to to start a nutrition, a, a different type of to 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 teach the patient that the a nutritious diet is uh, what it consists of. It's not only the quantity; it's all also the, also the quality of the food that they're eating. And and then we I teach them also during the time that they're on this medication to promote the less of the muscle mass loss and more of the fat loss to continue on a higher, a bit of a higher protein diet in that, not that they're going to take a bunch of protein in, but when we fix our plate to make sure if we're going to finish, you know, if we're going to get full faster, because you will get, you know, you will have that satiety or full fullness faster by the mechanism of, of the medications, which go to the brain and tell the brain, hey, you know, stop. You know, actually says there's a ringing and bells and lights and crossbars and everything and red flashing lights. This is enough more, a lot more than what your stomach is, your body is used to producing the hormone itself. The natural hormone your body produces that just tells you, hey, stop. It's like a stop sign. Um, we've learned over time as, you know, as people and, and many people in society and culture, our culture is to eat more. The analogy I like to give is. You go to dinner, you have a great dinner with your family and your friends, and you are sitting there and you're, you lean back into your chair and you think the waiter's going to come back in 10 minutes with the check, but he comes back with their dessert rack, the dessert cart. And, and he's like, dessert anyone? And inevitably, you or all of you at the table end up getting something off of that dessert cart. That's you passing the stop sign. Um, and not, you know, not listening. You, you've, you've passed, you've, you've, you've learned to bypass the hormone, uh, the, the, the fullness of the, that's telling you, hey, we've had enough to eat. We're good. But um, it's just so good. Food is just so good. It's, it's a social thing. It, it, it releases it, these great endorphins in our bodies. Um, certain foods are almost, almost addictive. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 that's what it is. But this medication actually puts a lot more than just a stop sign. Red bells and lights and, you know, red lights and bells and whistles and, 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 and everything is in the way. And you have got to crash through that thing. And if you crash through it, trust me, at the right dose, it's, going, it's not going to be fun. You know what I mean? It's not going to be fun. That's when I believe I get, you know, you get patients with vomiting and nausea and diarrhea and all this other good stuff. So um, listen, if you're on this medication, listen to the signs. You know, if you're full, you are full. Push the plate away. But eat proteins first, then your veggies in the middle. And then I say, hey, go ahead and, and put some carbs that you like on there. If you get to it, great. If you don't, you'll eat some. Uh, and then that'll be it. In between those those great those meals, you're gonna have your your fruit. Uh, and that'll keep your energy up. Make sure you get your exercise in at least five times a week. And the weight starts coming off inevitably. Then it talks about what weight, what that bound is, and it says it's a GLP-1 receptor agonist medic medication. Kind of, kind of odd that they don't promote here that the fact that it has that GIP um, capability as well. But we know that we know that that bound is different. Munjaro is different than the rest in that in that regard. Um, then you have, you know, tell, tells you again what not to do. You cannot use that bound if you have um, uh, medullary thyroid cancer in your history or your family has a history of it, or if you've ever had, uh, or if your family has any history of, of the men, um, the uh, uh, men type two. And, and then you have um, serious allergic reactions, which is again, the repeat from, you know, all medications, basically those enters say, don't use the medication if you have the allergy to any of the ingredients, the active ingredient, terzepatide, or any of the ingredients in Zepbound. And then see the and see the end of this medication guide for a complete list. At least you know the, if you look deep enough, you're going to find the complete list of, of ingredients. Again, you know there's going to be some technical names on there. How are you going to know that? You know how do how do we know that for sure? Uh, you know it's kind of hard to be honest with you to to know what part or what portion of the of a medication that they add. You know quite honestly, quite a bit to. Um, on a metal, uh, metabolic or molecular level to know exactly what it is that you know you're allergic to, but that's the warning there. Um, and then you're, you're you're supposed to tell your healthcare provider, not me, because I'm not your healthcare provider. I'm just talking about this stuff, um, and this is just for information purposes again <laughs> um, uh, about all the medications that you're on, 
Uh, tell them about if you've had problems with pancreas, your pancreas or, or, or your kidneys. And if you had any severe problems with your stomach in the past, especially, and this is the most important one, I think, for, for, for stomach issues. If, you've had, if you have severe problems with your, with your stomach, such as slowed emptying of your stomach itself, gastroparesis, or problems digesting food. Right. So this is something that you should definitely, if you've ever experienced any of that, tell your 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 provider right away. Right. Right from the beginning. Tell your doctor, uh, tell your provider, hey, you know, um, I've had I have issues or I've been told before that my stomach is very, very slow and empty. Um, that would maybe, you know, something that to alert you about right away if you begin to have issues with uh, with more you know, vomiting old food coming up. Mm, you ate this three days ago and it's still throwing up. That's not a good idea. It's something wrong, right? Um, it, because of the, some of the things that happened during the, the, this study, so it, it is, it's, it's very odd that diabetic retinopathy um, is on there. In my opinion, I, I can't really make that connection as to what, why um, that is, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's something that you should tell your doctor about so that you can discuss it and maybe Decide whether or not you're going to try the medication or not. But if you have a, a, a history of diabetic retinopathy, it's also something that you should tell your provider about. Now, um, Zep found like a ton of medications in clinical in, in clinical uh, trials, like pretty much all of them. <laughs> uh, we don't never test. We we never we never test um, pregnant women in these trials. So, you know, this is going to be some of the post. This, it ends up being some of the post exposure registry. This is like uh, phase four of the clinical trial uh, uh, process. What happens to people in the wild, in the real life? Um, you know, people end up on the medication, end up being pregnant, not knowing for several weeks. And if they are, then they're asked to register themselves or the doctor will, will um, get them to register here so they can get follow up in healthcare and see exactly what happens to, you know, what happens in, you know, most times nothing will happen, right? Most times. But there are times that, you know, I can, you know, we can think of some medications in the past that we would never, ever, ever give to a pregnant lady or, you know, a pregnant patient. So got to got to be very careful. They even recommend that you take uh, you, you, you uh, watch your 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 birth control because it may zip bound may interfere with the process of, you know, the the, the pharmacologic uh, activity, the pharmacokinetics of of. The actual birth control pills by mouth, it can decrease the effectivity, the effectiveness of the, the medication. So very, very careful with that. So you don't get pregnant if you're not looking to get pregnant. And if you do get pregnant, stop the medication immediately. Let your doctor know. Um, then we don't know what's going on with breastfeeding. Uh, we don't know if it passes in the milk. So not a good idea if you are breastfeeding to get on this medication. So um, tells you how you should use it. I gave you a quick, a quick rundown of how the, the actual auto injector works. So um, you should, you know, uh, read the instructions, go over it with your healthcare provider, go over it with your pharmacist if you have any questions. Um, it's injected just under the skin of your stomach, abdomen, thigh, or upper arm. So that's a question that came along um, to, from one of my patients uh, a couple of days ago. Um, she just, you know, came in for her injection and, you know, she, um, she was asking, you know, she just didn't have the right clothes on. It was just a matter of, you know, wearing the, you know, clothes that she couldn't get, we couldn't get to the abdomen, whether it's okay to get her upper arm. Absolutely. It's okay. You can do the upper arm, you can do the thigh, you can do the stomach. Those are places that were tested in most of these medications that are injected um, subcutaneously for this purpose. Um, now, you use it one, once a week, once a week, on the day that you use it, it could be any time of the day. Um, um, and you can choose, and you can also, this is another question. Can you change the day of the week you use that bound? Um, is, uh, yes, you can. Um, as long as the, the time between the two doses is at least three days. So if you, let's say you, you know, you got your first injection on a Monday and Monday just ends up being, you end up being, you know, oh my goodness, it's Tuesday and I forgot. Tuesday, I forgot two or three times. You can switch it. You can switch it. Um, you just have to make sure that there, there are at least three days between the two injections. So. Let's say you took it on Monday, the first of the month, and you decided you want to switch your day to, I don't know, Wednesday. So seven days on top of that, that'd be the eighth. 
you can take it again, move your day to Wednesday and take it on the 10th. And then you can take it every seven days because Wednesday, you like Wednesday better. I don't know. Point is, at least three days between the two injections, I would actually go to 10. I would, I would actually go past, you know, the week and let, you know, the medication do run its first course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it four days later. Um, I, I can't think of a situation. I guess if you're traveling maybe and you don't want to carry it with you um, for the next time and you just, you know, okay, well, I'm going to wait five days and put it on Friday or Saturday. And, and when I come back, I'll be, on, I'll be, I'll be home again. I don't want to carry the medication. I don't want to store it, which is, we'll talk about storing as well. So that's a possibility. But the, the point is manufacturer says 72 hours between, between doses if you want to switch. All right. Um, food, not necessary with food. It doesn't matter either way because it's, you know, it's not really, it's, it's subcutaneous. It's not really, it doesn't matter about what's going on in GI tract per se. Um, you should definitely change the rotation, rotate the, the, the injection site. You can do, again, the upper arm. You can do the thigh or the stomach. Those, those are places were tested. Um, and that's about it. Uh, but just choose, just to move it around. Uh, you could do the right abdomen and left abdomen. You could go back and forth between the abdomen if you want. Every, every week, every two weeks, you're going to get, you know, back to the right side or back to the left side. That's fine. You're, that's what's called rotation. But just don't, do not continue to do, if you're right-handed, do not continue to do the right side of your abdomen every single time. You can cause, um, well, in ins when, when we do this with insulin, we call, it's called something called lipodystrophy. You can, you can cause, so it's, you know, it's just not recommended to just continue to injure, cause a micro injury of the same thing every, every single time. It may not even be the medication. It may just be an inflammatory response from you injuring yourself in the same spot or near the same spot over and over again. So that's recommended to rotate. Um, overdose, if you overdose, if you, I don't know how you would over. well, I guess if you forgot and you said, hey, I did it on Monday and then did it again on Tuesday, and you're like, I don't remember if I did it on Monday or Tuesday, did it again on Wednesday. I don't know how you would overdose, but here it is. You, you know, we have the poison control center. You call them and let, and let them know what happened and they'll give you some guidance. Um, and then some, some other issues with kidney problems. The kidney failure, I think, is just a, a factor of losing fluids. And then you cause yourself an acute kidney injury, which is, you know, drying out the body. Well, in this case, would be drying out the body from dehydration and then causing some, you know, some, some low flow states, low, low volume states. And then, you know, the kidneys don't do well. So it's important to cause hydration, to, to, to be well hydrated. That's one of the things we also measure here. Um, we measure how hydrated, what number, what percentage that they're on, I mean, what percentage that they're presenting with. I like to keep my patients at least above 45%. Um, body hydration. Uh, we do that with a special scale we have here, and we mark that down. Um, if you have any gallbladder problems, it's something that you should know, should know. You should also watch for pancreatitis. Again, severe allergic reactions. Look out for low blood sugar. Again, it re it repeats all of the, the the signs and symptoms of low blood sugar that we've talked about before. Changes in vision with patients with type two diabetes. Um, that's the diabetic retinopathy, which is a, an affliction of the of the of the back of the eye. They call it the screen, um, the, the picture screen, the movie screen of the eye where the, the actual picture is, is, is um, it, it, it goes to and, and it's received into the brain. Um, and then again, with the depression or thoughts of suicide. Again, abdominal issues are the most common. Um, and then this outlier here, which is the hair loss, which we'll have to look into and see exactly why, well, why we think that is. I don't know if that's been described yet. Um, then you tell us about storage. You want to keep it cool in the refrigerator if you can. If you don't have, um, if you needed to get it out, you could get one of your, one or two of them out. Like I said, you wanted to go, uh, you wanted to take it on a trip or whatever you, I mean, outside of the fridge, it can last out. The, the, the actual injector can last outside of the fridge for 21 days. So if you have it out for 21 days, you know, you're going to use them, you know, for the next three weeks. Take the first one, you got it in, but now you got three that you have to use over the next 21 days. So, um, yeah, so you can travel with it. You can leave it at room temperature as long as it's not extreme heat or extreme cold. It can be, it can be used. Do not freeze it. It's no good. Um, if it's after 21 days at room temperature or whatever temperature after 21 days, um, do not use it. It is no good. Um, that's about it. And, you know, it says what the active ingredient is. We said it from the beginning, trizipatide is the active ingredient, the active ingredient that also resides in 
Manjaro. Um, and then here are the list of the other things that they're expecting you to know that you are allergic to. I don't know. Uh, and I mean, even MDs, doctors, we don't know. Like, you, you, I don't know. It's sodium chloride, sodium phosphate, by di dibasic, um, heptahydrate, and hydrochloric acid solution. I mean, hydrochloric acid solution. That's interesting. That's in there. And or sodium hydroxide solution may have been added to, to adjust the pH. Now, those are, those are, you know, those are inactive ingredients. They just make the pH, you know, based on, based on, um, you know, you don't want to be too acidic and too basic. I, I would assume it would break down the, the active, the active ingredient, which is tazepatide. So they're not, a, it's not a long list, but they, they are additives. So I guess they, they, they must let you know about them. So in summary, great medication, great news for the, for the medical community, great news for the, for this, for society at large. Uh, not in just in the United States, but in uh, all over the world. You're talking about over, you know, 650, I don't know, 600, and, look at the number here, 650 million adults worldwide suffering from chronic disease, uh, from, from obesity as a chronic disease. Um, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. And we looked at the numbers. We said, you know, it, it, deeper in there, you know, 10, the, the patients who were on the 10 and the, the 5 and 10 dose, no, sorry, the 10 and 15 dose, losing 50% of their, you know, 50, 50 to 57% uh, reduction in weight loss. Um, that's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. 50, 50, 48 pounds, um, 48 pounds over the 72 weeks. That's a lot. It's a lot of weight. So, um, yeah. Great medication. The numbers look good. The, the data looks good. Now we're going to see what it looks like in real life out in the wild. Um, this is going to be, eh, there's going to be a fight between you and, and your insurance company. Well, actually your doctor and your insurance company get this, get this approved. Um, brand new medic medication. You know how it is. Price is going to be sky high. Look for the coupons. Look for the, look for the, the coupons on the internet. There are there are ways that you could get this paid down. And look, I saw when I was, you know, going doing my research on this um, just today, I saw, you know, coupons for $25 a month um, if you can get it approved by your, by your insurance. But if not, you know, it's going to be your copay is going to be pretty high. Um, it's going to be pretty high. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking upwards of $500 to $600 possibly a month um, to get this medication. I mean, I've got opinions on that that, that are like, you know, Totally. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, we 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 have options now. That's the point. We do have options to treat the scourge that is obesity and how it affects um, our patients. And you have options, and you could you should discuss this with your medical provider because this is not medical advice. This is just a guy with an MD just happen to be talking about um to zip a tide and in its form zip bound so if you have any questions or comments please go ahead and leave them below uh like and subscribe if you like the content if you do i'll make more thank you take care